Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will learn about the synchronous counter and we will see the basic design procedure of the synchronous counter. So in the previous video, we have seen the limitations of the ripple counter. And we have seen that in the ripple counter, since the output of the one flip-flop is connected to the clock input of the next stage, so as we move from the one flip-flop to the other flip-flop, then the propagation delay of the each flip-flop will also get accumulated. And as the number of stages in the flip-flop increases, or as the number of bits in the counter increases, then this issue will become more prominent. And because of these issues, we might see the decoding error or the skipping of the count. So due to these limitations, this asynchronous counter or the ripple counters are not preferred for the high-speed applications. So this issue can be resolved by using the synchronous counters. So in case of the synchronous counters, all the flip-flops in the counter receives the clock at the same time. So sometimes in the synchronous counter, the output of the one stage is directly connected to the next stage or sometimes it is connected to the logic gate and through the logic gate, the next stage receives the input signal. So now let us see the general design procedure for this synchronous counter and let us see the steps that we need to follow to design any synchronous counter. So these are the steps that we need to follow to design any synchronous counter. So let us take one example and through the example, let us understand the design procedure of the synchronous counter. So let us say we want to design the three bit up counter. So the first step is to find the required number of flip flops. So since it is a three bit counter, so we will require the three flip flops. So now the next step is to draw the state diagram. So the state diagram will show the sequence in which the output state of the counter will change. And it shows that if the counter is in specific state, then what will be the next state of the counter? So in this case, since it is a 3 bit up counter, so the output of the counter will change from 000 to 111, where this number represents the output state of the each flip flop. So in this case, let's say the output of the three flip flops are Q2, Q1 and Q0, where the Q2 is the MSB and the Q0 is the LSB. So in this 3 bit up counter, we will have total 8 different states. And as you can see in the state diagram, the output of the counter will change in this sequence. So after the second step, the third step is to select the type of the flip-flop. That means using which type of flip-flop, we are going to design this counter. And once we decide the type of the flip-flop for the counter, then accordingly, we need to draw the excitation table of the counter. So in this case, let's say we are going to design this counter with the help of the JK flip-flop. That means all the three flip-flops in the counter will be the JK flip-flop. So before we draw the excitation table of the counter, first we should be aware about the excitation table of the JK flip-flop. So as you can see, this excitation table shows the present state and the next state of the flip-flop and it also shows the required inputs for the flip-flop to go from the present state to the next state. So in the earlier videos of the JK flip-flop, we have already seen the excitation table of this JK flip-flop. So for more information, you can check that video. All right. So now once we have selected the type of the flip-flop, so now let us draw the excitation table of the counter. So as you can see in this excitation table of the counter, the one column shows the possible output states of the counter. So here for the three beat up counter, the output count can go from the 000 to 111. Then this next column shows the next state of the counter. That means if the counter is in specific state, then what will be the next state of the counter? For example, if the present state of the counter is 001, then at the clock age, the next state of the counter will be equal to 010. Similarly, if the present state of the counter is 101, then at the next clock age, the state of the counter will become 110. So this column shows the next state of the counter corresponding to the present state. That means these two columns shows the present state and the next state of the counter. So now to move the counter from the present state to the next state, we need to find the required excitations for the each flip-flop. And to find that, we will take the help of the excitation table of the JK flip-flop. So here, first let us consider this column Q2. So here, this first column in the green color shows the present state of the Q2 output. And this Q2 plus is the next state of the Q2 output. So to get all these output transitions, 
let us find the required value of the J2N K2. And here we will take the help of the excitation table of the JK flip flop. So as you can see, for the 0 to 0 transition, J should be equal to 0, while the K should be equal to X. Likewise, for the 0 to 1 transition, this J should be equal to 1, while the K should be equal to X. Similarly, for this 1 to 1 transition, this J should be equal to X, while the K should be equal to 0. And likewise, for this 1 to 0 transition, this J should be equal to X, while the K should be equal to 1. So in this way, we got all the required excitations of the J2 and K2. So similarly, to find the required excitations of the J1 and K1, let us consider only this Q1 column. So here, this Q1 shows the present state of the flip-flop and this Q1 plus shows the next state. So once again, with the help of the excitation table of the JK flip-flop, we can find the required values of the J1 and K1. So if required, you can pause the video and you can verify the required J and K inputs for the all transitions. So similarly, now let us see the last column. So here, this Q0 represents the present state of the flip-flop and this Q0 plus represents the next state. So once again, to get all these output transitions, we can take the help of the excitation table of the JK flip-flop. So in this way, we got the required values of the J and K inputs for all flip-flops. So now, the next step is to find the minimal expression of the flip-flop inputs in terms of the outputs Q2, Q1 and Q0. Because as we have seen, the output of the flip-flops are connected to the inputs of the flip-flop through the combinational circuit. That means we need to find the expressions of the flip-flop inputs in terms of these outputs Q2, Q1 and Q0. And we can find the minimal expression with the help of the K-map. So here, first of all, let us find the minimal expression of the J2 and K2 in terms of the Q2, Q1 and Q0. So as you can see over here, this input J2 is equal to 1 only for the 1 input combination, while the 4 input combinations are the don't care terms. So first of all, let us try to map all these min terms in the K map. And let us try to find the simplified expression of the J2. So as you can see over here, we can combine this min term M3 with the don't care term. So this group corresponds to Q1 dot Q0. So we can say that here this J2 is equal to Q1 dot Q0. So similarly, let us try to find the simplified expression of the K2. So here, this K2 is equal to 1 only for the 1 input combination that is equal to 1 1 1 while the 4 input combinations are the don't care terms. So once again, let us map all these min terms in the K map and let us try to find the simplified expression. So once again over here, we can combine this min term M7 with the don't care term. So once again, this group corresponds to Q1 dot Q0. That means here, the minimal expression of the K2 is also equal to Q1 dot Q0. That means here, both J2 and K2 is equal to Q1 dot Q0. So similarly, now let us find the minimal expression for the J1 and K1. So if we see the column of the J1, then this J1 is equal to 1 for the two different input combinations that is 0, 0, 1 and the 1, 0, 1 while the four input combinations are the don't care terms. So first, let us try to map all these min terms in the K map. And from the K map, let us try to find the simplified expression of the J1. So here as you can see, with the help of the two don't care terms, we can make the group of four. And by making this group, we are able to cover all the ones in the K map. So here, this group corresponds to Q0. So we can say that the minimal expression of the J1 is equal to Q0. So similarly, let us try to find the simplified expression of the K1. So if you see the column of the K1, then once again, this K1 is equal to 1 for the two different input combinations. That is 0, 1, 1 and the 1, 1, 1. While the four input combinations are the don't care terms. So once again, let us map all these min terms in the K map. So if you see this K map, then once again, by using these two don't care terms, we can make the group of four. So once again, this group corresponds to Q0. So we can say that the expression of the K1 is equal to Q0. That means J1 is equal to K1 is equal to Q0. So similarly, now let us find the minimal expression for the J0 and K0. So if you see over here, then in both J0 and the K0 column, for the four different input combinations, the output is equal to one. 
while the remaining four input combinations are the don't care terms. So as you know, while finding the minimal expression in the K map, we can consider any don't care term as either logic zero or the logic one. So here, if we consider all these don't care terms as the logic one, then this J0 and K0 is equal to one for the all different input combinations. Or if we use the K map, then in the K map, we can make the group of eight ones. That means here, irrespective of the input combination, both J0 and K0 remains one. So we can say that here both J0 and K0 is equal to one. So in this way, we got the minimal expression for the each flip-flop. So now, based on these expressions, we can draw the logic circuit. So here, for the first flip-flop, or for the flip-flop at the LSP position, both J0 and K0 are connected to the logic 1. Likewise, here J1 and K1 is equal to Q0. That means here, the Q0 output is directly connected to the J1 and K1 input. And similarly, the expression for the J2 and K2 is equal to Q1 dot Q0. That means here, both Q1 and Q0 outputs are connected to the end gate and the output of the end gate is given to the J2 and K2 inputs of the last flip-flop. So in this way, we can design the synchronous 3-bit up counter. Now if the synchronous counter is the binary counter, then just by looking at the counting sequence also, we can design the counter. For example, if you see the counting sequence of this 3-bit up counter, then here, this Q0 is changing at the every clock pulse. That means the output of the first flip-flop is changing at the every clock pulse. And that is why here both J0 and K0 are connected to the logic one. So similarly, if you see the column of the Q1, then it is changing whenever this Q0 is equal to one. That means whenever this Q0 is equal to one, then at the next clock age, the output of the Q1 will toggle. And whenever this Q0 is equal to zero, then the output of the Q1 will remain same. That means here, we can connect this Q0 output to the inputs of the J1 and K1. Likewise, if you see the last column Q2, then here, this Q2 is changing when both Q1 and Q0 is equal to one at the same time. So as you can see, whenever both Q1 and Q0 are one at the same time, then at the next clock age, this Q2 output will toggle. And that is why over here, using the end gate, this Q0 and Q1 outputs are connected to the J2 and K2 inputs. So using the same pattern, we can also design the 4-bit up counter. So the 4-bit up counter counts from the 0000, 0000 to 1111. And once again, by looking at the pattern, we can draw the logic circuit of this 4-bit up counter. So if you see this Q0 output, then it is changing at the every clock pulse. That means here, both J0 and K0 inputs should be connected to the logic one. Similarly, if you see this column Q1, then this Q1 is changing whenever this Q0 is equal to one. That means here, this Q0 output should directly get connected to the J1 and K1 inputs. Or in other words, this J1 is equal to K1 is equal to Q0. Likewise, this Q2 is changing whenever both Q1 and Q0 are one at the same time. That means here, this J2 is equal to K2 is equal to Q1 dot Q0. So this will be the input combination for the third flip-flop. And likewise, if you see the last column, then this Q3 is changing whenever both Q2, Q1 and Q0 are one at the same time. That means here, the inputs for the J3 and K3 is equal to Q2 dot Q1 dot Q0. So based on this logic expression, this is the logic circuit of the four bit up counter. So here, using the first AND gate, this Q0 dot Q1 is generated. And using the second AND gate, we will get this Q0 dot Q1 dot Q2. So as you can see, the output of the first AND gate is one of the input to the second AND gate. And in this way, by following the same procedure, if you want to build the AND bit synchronous up counter, then we can also build that. So now, let us find the maximum propagation delay of this synchronous counter. So in case of the synchronous counters, all the flip-flops receive the clock at the same time. And that is why all the flip-flops should respond to the input at the same time. That means if the propagation delay of the flip-flop is equal to TPD, then all the flip-flops output should be available after that time. But here, we also need to consider the propagation delay of these AND gates. So here at the clock age, whatever is the value of this Q0 and Q1 output 
Based on that, this AND gate will generate the output for the third flip flop. But this output will be available after the propagation delay of this AND gate. So let's say the propagation delay of this AND gate is equal to TPD AND gate. So after this propagation delay, once the third flip flop receives a stable output, then it will generate the Q2 output after its own propagation delay. That means after the clock age, the stable output of this third flip flop will be available after the propagation delay of this AND gate as well as the flip flop. But if you see over here, then this fourth flip flop will receive the stable input after the propagation delay of the two AND gates. That means for this fourth flip flop, after the clock age, the stable output will be available after the propagation delay of these two AND gates plus the propagation delay of the flip flop. So in general for the end bit synchronous counter we can say that the maximum propagation delay in the counter is equal to this TPD flip flop plus n minus 2 times this TPD of the end gate. And you will observe this maximum propagation delay at the last stage. So here this n represents the number of flip flops in the counter. So this maximum propagation delay decides the maximum operating clock frequency of the synchronous counter. So as the number of flip flops in the counter increases then this propagation delay will also increase. But definitely this propagation delay will always be lesser than the ripple counters. For example, let us take this 4 bit synchronous counter. So here let's say the propagation delay of the each flip flop is equal to 10 nanosecond while the propagation delay of the end gate is equal to 2 nanosecond. So in this case the maximum propagation delay is equal to 10 nanosecond plus this 4 minus 2 times 2 nanosecond that is equal to 14 nanosecond. That means for this 4 bit synchronous counter the maximum propagation delay is equal to 14 nanosecond. On the other end if you design the 4 bit ripple counter using the same flip flops then in that case the maximum propagation delay is equal to 4 times 10 nanosecond that is equal to 14 nanosecond. So as you can see the synchronous counters are much faster. So here if we further want to reduce the propagation delay in the synchronous counter then what we can do? We can directly apply this Q0, Q1 and Q2 outputs to the AND gate. So here as you can see the each AND gate receives this Q0, Q1 outputs at the same time. And because of that in this case the maximum propagation delay is equal to the propagation delay of the AND gate plus the propagation delay of the flip flop. So in this way we can increase the speed of the synchronous counter. But in this case as you can see as the number of stages increases then we will also require the AND gates with the more number of inputs. For example for this 4 bit synchronous counter we require the one AND gate which has the three inputs. Similarly if we design the AND bit counter in the same manner then we will require the one AND gate which has the N-1 inputs. But in short in this way we can reduce the propagation delay of the synchronous counters. And in a way we can increase the maximum operating clock frequency of the synchronous counter. So so far we have seen the general procedure for designing the synchronous counter and we have seen that how we can design the 3 bit up counter. So similarly by following the same steps we can also design the 3 bit down counter. So I am quickly going through the steps that we have followed during the design of the up counter. But in between if required then you can pause the video and you can check the steps at the your pace. So once again since it is a 3 bit counter so we will require the 3 flip flops. So now the next step is to draw the state diagram. So in case of the 3 bit up counter it was counting from 000 to 111. But in case of the down counter it will count from 111 to 000. So here each circle represents the state of the counter and it shows that if the counter is in the specific state then what will be the next state of the counter. That means currently if the counter is in the 111 state then the next it will go to the 110 state. Or similarly currently if the counter is in the 011 state then at the next clock age it will go to the 010 state. So now once we know the state diagram of the counter then the next step is to select the type of the flip flop which we are going to use in the design of the counter. And based on that we need to draw the excitation table of the counter. So once again here we are going to use the JK flip flop. And to draw the excitation table of the counter we will use the excitation table of the JK flip flop. So as you can see 
the acceleration table of a counter consists of the three columns. The first column is the present state of the counter, while the second column is the next state of the counter. And the third column shows the required acceleration to the flip flop to get all these transitions. So, to find that, now let us consider only one column at the time. And first, let us find the required acceleration for the J2 and K2 inputs. So, here from the acceleration table of the JK flip flop, we can find the required inputs for the J2 and K2. Similarly, now let us consider the next column. So this Q1 represents the present state of the flip-flop while this Q1 plus represents the next state. And once again, by using the acceleration table of the JK flip-flop, we can find the required accelerations for the J1 and K1. And likewise, we can also find the required accelerations for this last column. So if required, you can pause the video and you can verify all the transitions for each flip-flop. So in this way, we got the required acceleration for the each flip-flop. So now, the next step is to find the minimal expression for the each flip-flop in terms of these outputs Q2, Q1 and Q0. So first, let us find the minimal expressions for the J2 and K2. So now, if you see this J2 input, then it is equal to 1 only for the 1 input combination, while the 4 input combinations are the don't care term. So if we map all these min terms in the K map, then this is how it will look like. So as you can see, we can combine this one with the don't care term. So this group corresponds to Q1 bar dot Q0 bar. Or we can say that this J2 is equal to Q1 bar dot Q0 bar. Similarly, let us find the expression for the K2. So once again, if you see this K2 column, then it is equal to 1 only for the 1 input combination. And the 4 input combinations are the don't care terms. So if we map all these min terms in the K map, then this is how it will look like. So once again, we can combine this min term M4 with the don't care term. And in this way, we will get the group of 2. So this group corresponds to Q1 bar dot Q0 bar. That means we can say that here this K2 is also equal to Q1 bar dot Q0 bar. So similarly, now let us find the expression for the J1 and K1. So if you see the column of the J1, then it is equal to 1 for the two different input combinations that is 1 0 0 and 0 0 0 while the four input combinations are the don't care terms. So if we map all these min terms in the k map then this is how it will look like. So as you can see over here we can combine these min terms m0 and m4 with the two don't care terms m2 and m6 and this group corresponds to q0 bar that means this j1 is equal to q0 bar. And similarly, if we find the minimal expression of the K1, then that is also equal to Q0 bar. That means here, both J1 and K1 is equal to Q0 bar. So now finally, let us find the minimal expression for the J0 and K0. So as you can see over here, both J0 and K0 are one for the four different input combinations, while the remaining four input combinations are the don't care terms. So once again, if we consider all these don't care terms as logic 1, then here, for all the different input combinations, both J0 and K0 is equal to 1. So we can say that the minimal expression for the J0 and K0 is equal to 1. So in this way, we got the minimal expression for the each input. And from the minimal expression, we can easily draw the logic circuit. So as you can see, for the first flip-flop, both J0 and K0 are connected to the logic 1. Now here, for the second flip-flop, both J1 and K1 is equal to Q0 bar. That means here, this Q0 bar output is directly connected to the J1 and K1 input. And likewise, for the third flip-flop, this J2 is equal to K2 is equal to Q1 bar dot Q0 bar. That means here, through the end gate, this Q0 bar and the Q1 bar outputs are connected to the J2 and K2 inputs. So this is the circuit of the 3-bit down counter. So here, with the little modification, we can combine the circuits of the 3-bit up and the down counter. So here, this M input decides whether the circuit will work as the up counter or the down counter. So whenever this M is equal to 1, then this circuit will work as the up counter. Because whenever this M is equal to 1, then all the upper end gates will get enabled and all the Q outputs will be applied to the next stages. On the other end, the output of this NOT gate will become 0 and because of that, 
all the QBAR outputs will get disabled and they will not get applied to the next stages. So in this way, when m is equal to 1, then this circuit will work as the up counter. And whenever this m is equal to 0, then all the upper AND gates will get disabled. And in this condition, the output of this NOT gate will become 1. And therefore, all the QBAR outputs will apply to the next stage. And in this way, this circuit will work as the down counter. So in this way, by following the standard design procedure, we can design any synchronous counter. But in this specific video, we have seen that how we can design the synchronous binary counters. So now in the next video, we will see that how we can design the synchronous counter, which can count in the specific sequence. So if you have any question or suggestion, then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.